Welcome to North Stradbroke Island, the second largest sand island in the world. Stretching over 275 square kilometres, the island is home to some of the most amazing and resilient wildlife on the planet. Stradbroke Island is located on the east coast of Australia. Many of Australia's favourite animals call this place home. But hidden deep within the island's interior are some of its most stunning freshwater treasures. Stradbroke is home to an abundance of freshwater ecosystems that we'll be exploring in today's adventure. Our adventure today starts off with a short ferry ride from the mainland across to the island. You can almost instantaneously feel a different energy when you first arrive. Our first stop is Myora Springs, facing inland on the western side of the island. This is one of the island's hidden gems, a pristine natural spring that feeds right into Moreton Bay. The interesting thing about Myora Springs is that it's a tidal region, which means the area that we are studying experiences fluctuations between salt and fresh water throughout the day. All of the fish species located within Myora Springs have adapted to these conditions. Pacific blue eyes are a small freshwater fish belonging to the Pseudomogal family. They are a popular species among aquarium hobbyists and can be found in a wide variety of environments along the eastern coast of Australia. Little do they know, they are part of one of the rarest ecosystems and phenomena in the world. A natural spring which provides a constant flow of fresh water into the bay. At low tide, the water in Myora Springs is entirely fresh being fed by the groundwater stream below. This is when the Pacific blue eyes are most abundant in the area, returning from the sedges which they hide within during high tide. As the tide continues to drop, the populations of blue eyes continue to increase, swimming in small schools searching for their next meal. They are known to be opportunistic feeders, Will eat whatever prey items are available in their environment. Unfortunately, they do not sit high upon the food chain and are at constant risk of predation from other species. Once the tide turns, these fish know that it's time to retreat. returning back to the sedges to avoid predation from larger brackish species. As the tide continues to rise, the water changes from fully fresh to salt water, bringing an array of larger brackish species into the spring. The little blue eyes do their best to avoid any close encounters with these crescent grunters, who've made their way up the spring from the bay and they're not here to make friends. Unfortunately, not all the blue eyes make their way into the sedges before high tide, leaving a small group of fish that must avoid the newly arrived predators. Also arriving during high tide are some baby mangrove jack. Whilst these guys are only a few centimetres in length, they'll end up being over a metre long by the time they're adults. But no one is quite as aggressive as the crescent grunters. Our 
Outside the water, things are a little more peaceful. With a few hermit crabs patrolling the area. But there is far more hidden within the island than just Myora Springs. It is now time to make our way to camp. Not too far from Myora Springs is Amity Point, another often overlooked gem on the island. Most visitors prefer to stay on the eastern side of the island, but Amity Point has a little bit more of a laid back feel. Sharing the campsite with us today are some of Australia's most popular native animals. Being located on the western side of the island, Amity Point is one of the only campsites where you can watch a sunset over the water. Once the sun sets, many more animals are out and about. Including this expanse of turtle crossing the road. Shrimp are also more abundant during the night, coming out of their burrows for a midnight snack. But as the sun rises on the eastern side of the island, we are set for another day full of adventure. We are off to Blue Lake, renowned for its clear blue waters surrounded by lush greenery. It is located on the eastern inland of the island and is another of North Stradbroke's hidden gems. Blue Lake is a three and a half kilometer hike through the Australian bush from the nearest car park. And the walk shows some of Australia's most amazing botanicals. At the end of the path, you are greeted by the island's most beautiful freshwater oasis. Just under two kilometers away from the Pacific Ocean, Blue Lake is another marvel of North Stradbroke Island. And hidden within are some of the most amazing aquatic creatures. Blue Lake is formed from an interesting and rare phenomena a process in which pure spring water is trapped within a dip in the water table, thus forming a lake like you can see today. And the lake derives its clear blue waters from the constant flow of ancient water from the basin. The ornate rad is popular among rainbow fish collectors and can be found in many freshwater environments along the northeastern coast of Australia. But their colors and patterns vary upon location. They stick to the edges of the lakes and spend most of their mornings breeding in the hair grass. All of a sudden, the rad sense something in the distance. An adult expansive turtle has come to the edge of the lake to check out what's happening this morning. Running from Blue Lake is a small stream that feeds to a part of the island which is unlike any other on the planet.
over 3,000 hectares of freshwater wetlands just a stone's throw away from the sea. Completely fed by groundwater, 18 Mile Swamp is the largest non-floodplain wetland in the world. The swamp is an important breeding ground for many species of birds and amphibians, and supports a diverse range of aquatic life, including more of the ornate rads. But the rads are not the only fish in the swamp. The waters of the wetlands are riddled with feral gambusia a highly invasive fish species that's unfortunately made its way into many of Australia's freshwater ecosystems. Gambusia were released in an attempt to mitigate mosquito populations, and have since overrun many of North Stradbroke's waterways. A perfect example of this can be found in a further inland lake on the island. Brown Lake is a perch lake filled entirely with rainwater. It is situated above sea level and it's unknown whether there were originally any native fish species in here. But the Gambusia have found a way in and completely taken over, and are the only fish species that can be found within the Tannenstein water. It is likely that if there were any native fish species in here, the Gambusia ate all their fry and eggs, thus wiping them out and taking the lake for themselves. It is important for us to understand the huge role that we can play in affecting these fragile ecosystems. I hope you enjoyed this documentary of the beautiful North Stradbroke Island and hope to see you in the next video.